Hello everyone, welcome to this Coral Paint Shop Pro tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be attempting to create um, what we see here. Um, this is a photograph of myself, my name here, and I created an environment out of wood and wall. And one of the major things that I want to highlight here is also um, how to achieve good lighting are somewhat good lighting um, you know playing with shadows casting shadows and those kind of stuff in addition to that I also want to showcase um, the graphic design capabilities of Corel Paint Shop Pro I know most graphic designers out there they tend to use um, Photoshop but I would like to showcase um, the Corel's Corel Paint Shop Pro's um, capabilities of producing fairly good graphic design work. Um, okay, so let's get straight into it. All right, so go up to file new, 11 inches wide, 5 inches wide, 300 pixels. Okay, so there we have it, our document there. So let's just throw on a white background just so that we can see it a bit better so what I did I went to Google and I did a search for in order to find this wooden texture here I did a search for board wood I did a search for wood and I searched and I, until I found this so you can do the same so copy image go back to Corel Paint Shop Pro and then control V to paste or I could just go up to edit and paste as a new layer so what I'm going to do I'm going to hit the selection tool click the image hold shift to do a rotate and hold here the handle here and do a rotate I'm holding shift so that it snaps perfectly in snaps um, to 90 degrees all right so I'm going to scale it up a bit and I may even just drag it sideways so what I'm also going to do I'm going to go up to with the selection tool um, selected I'm going to go up to mode here and select perspective and then I'm going to hold the corner here to drag it in a bit just to create a a look as if the board is going away from us so the illusion of being in 3d all right so I scale it down a bit bring this up and then I can bring it across some more and across some more so let's go back maybe I can even go back to perspective and bring it in a bit just so that it appears to be really flat mm -hmm. and that's it here S scale sideways again sideways again then I'm going to bring it down and maybe I'll leave it up alright note that it won't come out perfectly like this one but what is important here is just um, the techniques being used all right so that's that looks good so I'm going to duplicate right click on the layer here duplicate and then go up to image mm, and flip vertically and then bring this one up to the top create the ceiling okay going good so far so I'm also going to so I found this this file online it's called concrete basement so you do a Google search for that you'll find it so I copy image go back into my document here and paste it control V paste so what I'm doing to do, I'm going to bring it behind, below these two um, top layers, the wooden layers. And then I'm going to scale it up a bit. 
just so that it fills out the end that entire arm here. Could move it around until I get. All right, this looks good. So let's go back to the original. What you would notice here, I also had a strip of wood going across the document here from left to right. So I'm going to add that one in as well. So I used, you could use a random board. I found this, I realized that I could crop it and make it into what I want. So, so copy the image, go back into the document, paste it, and go to the selection option here click the selection tool I'm going to just cut away the areas that I really don't need because my objective here is really to create something that is rectangular so that I can stretch it across to create that piece so there I have it so click this the selection to the pick tool rather and go here I'm just going to stretch it generally in graphic design stretching items like this is not a good practice but in the case for this purpose it doesn't matter because as you can see it looks pretty okay so after I have stretched it I am going to duplicate it so that I can put it to the bottom another copy of it to the bottom all right so it looks good looks good all right so now I'm going to click this the top um, wood here and go to effects 3d um, drop shadow and what it did it created a, a black shadow around it just to you know bring it off um, the the background the wooden ear and the concrete ear somewhere so I'm going to increase the opacity here all right so it looks good reduce the blurriness increase the opacity and I'm also going to do the same for the bottom piece so effects 3d drop shadow and Corel automatically um, selects the last use um, setting, so I don't. I need not adjust it here again, and just click OK right away. All right. So there we have it. The environment has been created. So now I'm going to add in the text. So as you can see, I have still written here. So click the text tool ensure that I click the layer the topmost layer because I want the text to appear in front of everything and type the word Stewie S T E W Y you could put your name here of course and I'm going to use the the font impact if it's not on your machine you can search for it and then I'm going to go into the fill and go to gradient I created a gradient that looks let me see I'm going to I created a gradient it's basically um, different sh light to a light to dark shade of orange so I made that the fill and I'm going to use the pick tool again to scale it up like this could scale it up some more all right and this looks good Bring it down somewhere let me see here what i noticed here the text here looks a bit narrow so i'm going to bring it in somewhere to create to make the text looks um, narrow all right 
this looks good so let's move on to adding some shadows so as you can see here there's a shadow underneath the text here just to create the illusion of it sitting on the wooden here there so what I did or um, what I'm going to do now is going to go down to my shapes go to Eclipse and then select left click right click left click right click to create a black fill and black stroke and then I'm going to select the layer just below the text layer and drag to create this um, oval shaped shadow and click apply and select my pick tool I could position it a bit according to what I want and then I'm going to go up now to um, adjust and then blur and Gaussian blur I can never get this word I hope I, I pronounced it correctly Gaussian blur and then hit OK basically that is telling you that it will be converted into um, a raster layer so Gaussian blur I can play with the, ra the radius of the blur which is essentially how blurred the image is hit OK then I'm going to so we have something now almost looking like it's actually sitting on the ground Could widen this somewhere all right and then reduce reduce the opacity of the blur I'm going to add a slight shadow to the text itself just to slightly create a three-dimensional look so image 3d drop shadow it's saying that it will be converted to raster layer it warns you because raster layers cannot be edited in the case of this this is a vector layer text layer so we if i wanted to change a letter i could just go to the text tool select the text delete the text delete the letter say i want to remove the e i just delete the e and that would be good but you can't do that with a raster layer all right so the changes you make will be somewhat permanent so as you can see the, a shadow has been created around the text but i'm going to reduce the opacity of the shadow mm -hmm. this looks good all right and then Okay, so this looks good. So the image looks very dark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new raster layer above everything. Right, and I'm going to go to my fill tool, select black, and fill, um, put a black layer above everything. I'm going to make it slightly transparent and this is how you create the shadow effects and lighting effects that you want so create a shadow the areas that you want to be well lit you would go to your eraser tool what I do I reduce the hardness of the the brush to zero and in this case I brought the size of the brush to 999 which is the maximum size all right and then you begin to erase portions of the black layer to create that lighting effect that you desire and already you can begin to see um, a somewhat realistic lighting effect being 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 produced all right onto the wall I'm going to also create so I'm going to create a raster layer just above it and 
then a black and then I'm going to create a lighting onto the wall itself so we'll go back to the eraser tool erase portions of the black layer of the black layer just so that the lighting is kind of dynamic all right that looks good then above everything I'm going to create a new um tell you what I'm going to use an orange layer so above everything new new raster layer okay and I'm going to select an orange color Right, paste, um, fill. And then, right here, these are blend modes. So, for each layer, you have different. You you can play with blend modes. By default, it's on normal. So you can go to darken, and this is what darken looks on this. Let me bring it below it. Okay, let me bring it above it. it looks better above and then lighten so what you can do you can use your mouse wheel to just toggle through the different options so it's on you another roll until you get the result that you like i like saturated saturated looks nice but let's go through and see might just be surprised luminance no nah. screen nah. dissolve overlay hard light soft light dodge burn so right now I'm thinking that I'm going to use um, saturated so all right saturated can reduce the opacity of this it's actually more of a yellow let's try yellow and see what's happen. what happens Increase it. Let's try overlay as I said it won't look exactly like the original but the concept still remains the same right, let's go back to let's try using a gradient orange all right all right so this looks good so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to create the shadow for the text so pick duplicate the text layer and then I'm going to go back to the pick tool then go to scale and I like to use free for the stuff like this so basically I'm going to put this layer below that's wait, that's the layer this is the layer below so I'm going to put this layer below this one here because this will I'm going to use this to create the shadow for the floor. So I'm just bending it so that it matches the flow of the floor in terms of how it's positioned in 3D. All right. Bring this down some more. Okay. And then I'm going to make it black. So a quick way that I use do use to make things black or white is just by going to adjust brightness contrast and then reduce the brightness all the way down to to minus two five five. The last um the lowest number it can possibly go. If I wanted it white, I would bring it to the maximum. 
so way down to make it black click OK and then I'm going to go up to images for the same layer with the same layer selected I'm going to go up to images adjust the blur and do Gaussian blur right reduce it some more adjust it and I could actually scale this um, bring this up some more bring this up some more here so it stretches even further back and then reduce the opacity mm -hmm. All right. So for with this layer, with the text layer selected, I'm going to create a copy of it, duplicate, and then adjust. I'm going to make a black layer above it again. So brightness, contrast, and zero is okay. Um, I want to create the illusion of the top part of the text being lighter, so that the lighting, the light source is a little bit higher than the the text so i'm going to go to the eraser tool and erase, erase parts of the top like that and then reduce it ah looking good In the, the opacity of um, the dark layer. All right. So now for the shadow on the wall. So go to the text layer again, duplicate it. Go back to adjust brightness contrast. Reduce the brightness to zero, well to the lowest. And then I'm going to move it back bring it below the text layer so that it falls behind and then now I can scale it up a bit select it go ensure that it changes to scale and scale it up a bit and images just blur Gaussian blur and I'm going to increase the blur a lot mm -hmm. and then okay and I'm going to reduce the visibility of the shadow so it's starting to look really good here I could bring up the flooring, remember this, the flooring shadow some more. And I could also increase this shadow here some more. This is the sh shadow that is on the text itself. And there we have something coming on really nice. So let's look back on the original. Um, it looks very grungy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the photograph of myself. So open with Corel Painter Pro. Then I'm going to try to quickly cut out the image. So. So I'm going to go to the selection tool and in Corel Paint Shop Pro X6 they have introduced the smart selection brush. So let's see how we can use that to get some results quickly. So select the areas that 
I want to keep it will do some automatic selections based on pixel colors okay and just continue with that try this side it won't be perfect but it would give you a good start so as you can see the inside area here is being selected but we will continue nonetheless So let's invert the selection, duplicate this, and with the top layer, the top layer selected, delete, and then delete the bottom layer. I'm going to create a back white background just so that we can see it a bit better. And go back to the selection options. I'm going to go to freehand selection then in the selection type smart edge so this helps you to select edges of images it automatically detects the edges and increases your accuracy all right so i'm just going to go around this real quick you can spend more time um doing this to get it perfect but for the demonstration of this video for the well this is not too good let me delete that let me start again Control D to deselect go quickly alright I think I'm trying to go too fast here <laughs> Whoa, trying to go too fast there, so it's coming out. So basically, you trace the image all the way around. We may, I may end up pausing the video to complete it So ensure that you subscribe to my channel. Um, I will be adding some more videos, video tutorials. So just click the subscribe button below so that you can keep up to date with some of the videos that I will be posting. can see it, some of the shoe was taken here but I'll use the eraser tool to bring in bring back some of the missing areas This area has already been removed. So you can right click. So you right click to cl close the selection. Then I'm going to go to invert and delete. Control D. And I'm going to use the eraser tool just to fine tune a bit some of the areas. So reduce the size of the eraser. 
I'm going to increase this to about 69 and then right click on the image here to bring in the shoe then increase it somewhere increase the hardness somewhere reduce the size and use the mouse wheel and delete the excess here If you hold the space bar, you can get this hand thing that allows you to move left and right on your on your, your design. It's useful, especially when you're up close and you need to move to another area of your image uh, artwork. Again, you don't have to get for the sake of this tutorial. I won't get this perfect, but. So go to the selection, the pick tool, select the image, copy, control C. Go back to the area, control V. Alright, so scale it down a bit. And if you notice the image is diagonal, so we'll need to rotate it to make it look as if I'm actually standing. And this looks good yeah this looks good <coughs> mm -hmm. this looks good so I could scale it up a bit and then now uh, ensure that I bring it below um, starting to not like this okay all right let's work with it as is so what I'm going to do I'm going to duplicate this layer make it black completely black using the same method brightness brightness and contrast reduce it okay then I'm going to go to image blur Gaussian blur my objective here is to create a shadow below my feet similar to what we did for the texture okay then bring the shadow here below so as you can see shadow there's a slight shadow below could bring the shadow air down some more so select the shadow air click it and just press the down arrow to bring it down some more you hold shift it bring it all the way down control is okay this looks good enough and then I'm going to sit with the shadow area selected. I'm going to use the eraser tool to remove the excess shadow that is on my upper, behind my upper body. Because I really just want it down where my feet are. And then I'm going to duplicate the image again. Make it black once again. So I'm going to create a shadow that is being casted onto the floor. So, brightness, contrast, okay, then go, with, go select the pick tool, go to change the mode to free, and do something similar to what we did with the text, and to bring it down like this. And then now we move it behind the image. Okay, looking nice. 
settings and then image adjust rather blur Gaussian blur increase it and then OK and I'm going to reduce the opacity of it so that it matches um, the opacity of the, sh the shadow, the text, the shadow of the text. I'm also going to duplicate it again to create the shadow on the wall. So, same technique: adjust brightness, contrast, reduce it. Okay. Then bring it behind the image. I'm going to scale scale it down so go to scale scale it down and then I'm going to start the shadow where the other one ended doesn't have to look perfect image adjust blur Gaussian blur Okay, then bring it down some more so that the shadow looks like a continuation of it so it reaches here then it bends upward scale it up a bit and then reduce the opacity and go to the eraser tool and erase some part here uh, so what we have here is the shadow being running along the floor and up onto the wall having something here we have something looking nice and then add another text here so here I'm going to use the re machine text R E machine you can search for it script and type anything from it can be done and should be done it should be done it it must be done. Control A to select all and I'm going to make this white. Right click, left click. Okay. And increase. Okay. And then behind this now I'm going to make it give it a shadow so our so what I'm going to do I'm going to double click the layer or I could right click I could hit click the the arrow beside the, the layer and right click. Hmm. Let me see. Oh, you could just right click on the layer and go to properties, and then layer style, auto glow, and then select the color of the glow to black and there we have this black glow that looks like a shadow around it. I'm going to reduce the size of it as well as the opacity of it so that it's not that strong and okay so we have something looking very close to this but if you notice this is very Textured, you can see the texture, the various textures being just popping out, and that is achieved by adding another effect to it. So, let's before we do that, let's add another black layer above everything just so that it's darker. So, a new raster layer, okay, 
and then black and then now we erase, use the erase and erase parts of the black layer opacity here highlight the image reduce it a bit going to make the lower part of my body a little darker so duplicate and then adjust so you realize that it's pretty much the same technique to adjust lighting, especially dark, you know, when you're trying to create dark areas and all of that. And then we can make it slightly transparent. Uh, so right now this looks really nice or close enough to this so what I'm going to do now I'm going to make it pop the textures various textures pop so what we can do we can do a merge all just to have everything as one flat layer then duplicate and could go to enhance high pass sharpen this is a good starting point to sharpen the image so you can see the before this is the before this is the after increase the strength so you see the image is getting sharper the different textures and features of the image is popping out more and I happen to have the Topaz lab that also has a nice feature in it called Topaz Adjust. If you don't have this, don't never mind. You can always play with the enhanced photos and pretty much do whatever you want. But the Topaz lab has a feature that I really like that creates a HDR look. An image, so the HDR collection, and then. I think it's pop, heavy pop, yeah. let's work with heavy pop grunge and OK, but what it did, it made the image a bit brighter. So I'm going to create a new layer above it, OK. Fill it with black again. And then erase parts to reveal the image underneath. So there we have something looking close to that. Okay. Alright. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me show you the final um so full screen preview. So this is what it looks like. Um the finished product. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope you learned a lot from it in terms of the different techniques that you can use to play with lighting, as well as as well as the fact that you can use Corel Paint Shop Pro to create, because the techniques used in this can be used to do graphic design work. So feel free to explore the application and don't feel limited to Photoshop. Not that I have anything against Photoshop, but 
this application is very very powerful and it can be used to create professional looking work so just it's a matter of just exploring the tools exploring the techniques and coming up with great products all right thanks for watching be sure to subscribe um and see you later